In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Romeo Essential Number no. 7 fountain pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is a Romeo fountain pen. Now, Romeo was a bespoke fountain pen maker in Spain, and they went out of business a few years ago. But this is a very interesting pen, one that I think not a lot of people will have seen. So I thought it was still worth showing and doing a, a review, even though you can't really get these anymore other than used. Now, I custom ordered this in 2014. This model is called the Essential, and it's a very minimalistic pen, which is why it's called the Essential. I originally ordered it with what they called a number nine nib, and I'll put a picture up showing that old nib on this pen with like a Mont Blanc 149 nib and some other big nibs. And it, it, it was just huge. The section on this pen isn't very thick. So I just found it not to be comfortable. So I sent this pen back to Spain and they put a smaller number seven nib on it for me, uh, which is what is on this pen today. So let's walk through it. Again, it's called the Essential and it's very, very minimalistic. It's a high gloss ebonite, a blue ebonite. It's very pretty flat tops mostly so it will stand up on the desk it has a solid gold roll stopper that is plated in rhodium when you ordered these you had a number of options i wanted the silver trim versus the the gold so they kept the the roll stopper as gold but they rhodium plated it and then taking the cap off we can see the large number seven nib, 18 karat gold, and again, rhodium plated. And then we have a very long tapered grip section, flares out at the end, and then threading through there. Also on the end here, we can see the, the number of the pen that they put in here. This is number 387. I don't know if you can see that. It is quite kind of hard to see. It's an ebonite nib, sorry, feed rather. Interestingly, compared to that old one, this one has a lot more, I don't know, uh, it looks a bit more crude than that other one, and the shape is actually quite a bit different. All of their nibs were made in-house by, I think it's Olivaro Romeo. Um, he was the CEO and, the, you know, the maker of the pens and the nibs. So th these nibs are not something you will find on any other pen. This nib is called a number seven nib, and they specified it as being a semi-flex fine. Uh, my original number nine was, I think, a italic something or other. These are very soft nibs. I'll do a writing sample. So it's an eyedropper, but there's no blind cap here with, you know, a, like a, a valve that you can control. So there's no control over the airflow. There's really just, let's see if we, this doesn't make a mess. It is filled. Um, so metal parts interact with the ink, which isn't ideal probably. There's an O-ring in here, uh, but you just literally use an, the eyedropper, it comes with an eyedropper, drop the ink in there, screw this on, and to be honest, you just hope for the best. <laughs> it's not the easiest always to get it flowing. You never want to shake this pen. If you shake this pen, ink will just pour out of it. It's really not an ideal system for an eyedropper. I, well, I already don't like eyedroppers, and this one I have even less control over, so it is tricky, but it is a special pen. As a comparison, just to show you the size of this nib, the number seven nib is about the same size as a 149 nib. Maybe it's, yeah, it's about, pretty much about the same size. It's just skinnier. This calligraphy nib is also a bit fatter than the normal 149 nib. But notice how small the grip section is. Now this has a very big grip section, so maybe that's not completely fair, but on that original number nine nib, it was just not comfortable. It was too skinny to grip and you had to be way too far off of the paper. I think if it this had a fatter nib or a fatter grip section, I would have found that number nine uh, to be more comfortable or this one also to be more comfortable. 
One of the things about this pen that I think is really interesting is this cap is crazy thin. It's like 0.4 millimeter thin, that cap clip. It's crazy. I have had this pen for, well, since 2014. I don't, I really don't use this pen a lot just because of those ink flow problems. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit too much excitement for me. Posting this, uh, it does it, but that's a long pen. All right, let's let's go ahead and do some measurements, then we'll do a writing sample. About 153 millimeters, or 152, somewhere in there. Quite long, uncapped, about 139, 140. Posted, I don't really recommend posting this just because of how thin that cap lip is, but also just look at how long it is. It doesn't seat very far down, 211 millimeters. I think that's officially the longest pen I've ever, well, I've ever had, or certainly I've ever done on this channel. Now, in terms of weight, it has metal parts in here, so it's definitely, it has some heft to it, I think. Uh, that's really actually not that bad. It's not a light pen, 28.84, not crazy heavy, 25, so, wow. I mean, I'll, yeah, the cap weighs basically nothing. It's super thin. Okay, let's do the writing sample. For the writing sample, I'm going to be doing this on a paper mind Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebook. This is a company that I started. These are really excellent notebooks with fountain pens. And for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, I'm giving 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. Okay, let's get on to the writing sample here. So... Romeo, oh, and this is a fine semi flex. Try fast writing. If it sounds scratchy, that's because it kind of is. It keeps up pretty well, not too many issues. Um, you know, we do get a little bit of skipping here and there, but you're not really going to use it that way. Now, reverse writing. Really scratchy, really cutting into the paper there. Don't recommend that. Softness. So this pen is flexible, but I really do think it's a good idea to be careful with this because it is, well, one, it's not really replaceable. So you don't want to overdo it, but you can get some moderate amount of flex there. Um, yeah, it makes me nervous doing that. Okay, so that is the writing sample. It's an okay writer. I would say it's this has never been an amazing writer. I wish it was a touch smoother. My other number nine was a bit smoother than this. But it's an interesting pen to write with. I do like it for occasional use, but it's definitely not an everyday kind of pen for me. Okay, so what are my pros and cons for the Romeo Essential Number no. 7 fountain pen? The biggest pro is definitely the nib. You know, Romeo nibs are all custom made in house to the orders, to the purchaser's specification. So each nib is unique and completely handmade. So that is very special. I also really like this high gloss ebonite body, it's very pretty. We have a solid gold roll stopper on there. In terms of cons, uh, I don't like that this pen is an eyedropper and there's no way to control the ink flow. You just dump the ink in there and, you know, hope for the best. If you shake the pen, you go like this, 
Uh, there's no ink in here now. It will the ink will just kind of pour out of the pen. So you have to be somewhat careful with it. Originally ordered this as a number nine, which is the biggest nib that they made, and it's much bigger than a Mont Blanc 149 nib or this nib. And it was just too big. The grip section was too skinny for me. I just I didn't find it comfortable. And this, even now, I don't find to be that comfortable of a pen to use, even though it's really pretty. And the other obvious big downside here is Romeo went out of business, so they don't make these anymore. So you'll only be able to get them uh, secondhand. And they didn't make a lot of these, so I wouldn't expect them to come up for sale too, too often. So that is definitely a big downside. Okay, so do you guys have a Romeo? Do you like this Romeo pen? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.